Uh, Mrs. Steelman, today you were thanked by a, by several members of the, the Poverty Law Financial Institution community uh, for keeping Missouri money in Missouri when you were state treasurer. Why did you decide to, to make that decision? Because I thought it was ridiculous that we were investing taxpayer money outside of the state of Missouri and that we should bring it back here, invest it in banks throughout Missouri, use uh, local state brokers, and get that money working for Missourians right here at home. You were also a, a, a big a big concern at the meeting was about Dodd-Frank. Mm -hmm. if, if you're a member of the United States Senate, will you be a vote to repeal Dodd-Frank, or do you see some provisions that were needed? I would repeal Dodd-Frank. Uh, from what I can tell and from the bankers that I'm talking to throughout the state, it has really hurt uh, independent banking community and they are uh, having to deal with a lot more regulations. They, they can't make loans to people as quickly as they want to, or some not at all. Uh, and it, it's, it's having a stifling effect on our economy instead of helping create uh, jobs and get our economy moving. So I think we need to repeal it. Uh, one of the biggest issues in southeast Missouri as far as economic development goes is rural broadband. How do, you see, how do you see rural broadband as an issue in economic development? Well, we know how the Internet helps move product and, and create uh, economic activity throughout the world. I mean, somebody sitting in Poplar Bluff, Missouri, if you have access to Internet, can, can reach all the way around the world. So we definitely need to make sure that those, those dollars that were intended for broadband expansion are used in rural areas in Missouri. You know, I drove down from Rolla today. Uh, the area that I drove through had no cell service whatsoever. And so we definitely need to make sure that we are reaching out to people so that we can all be connected through the internet. Uh, I, one of the biggest national stories right now is the Herman Cain phenomenon. What, what have you seen about, about Herman Cain's candidacy that's excited you or surprised you or that you've been disappointed in? You know, I think it's because he comes across as, as genuine and real, and he's just talking to people like you and I would sit here and talk about uh, whatever issues that are important to, to you and me. And, and I, so I think people are hungry and thirsty for just hearing real talk and, and sitting there and understanding what they go through in their daily lives. And I think that's a lot of why he um, has, has taken off the way he has. One of the a story last week was about uh, Senator McCaskill inviting President Obama to back the campaign for her. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> well, she called him uh, her, her, his, her best friend forever, BFF, so I guess she's now going to, you know, bring him in to help her. Uh, but, you know, Claire McCaskill basically personifies uh, President Obama and everything that he believes in. Everything that he's wanted, she's voted for, and so the two of them are just alike. And if uh, you know, if I, I guess that's why she's going to campaign with him because they're they're good buddies. And lastly, um, there's been a big issue made about your willingness to debate your primary opponents and their reluctance to or not answering. Um, the Seymour Times has discussed with some other. Um, uh, regional news outlets about putting together a debate via Skype. Is this something you'd be interested in? Sure. You know, I'm, I'm willing to debate anywhere, anytime. I think the voters really like debates because you get to hear about uh, your solutions to the problems that are facing the country. I think there is an urgency about debates as well because we are in trouble in this country and we need to start talking about it. And this Debates help engage voters. You know, I still haven't heard from uh, one of my opponents, uh, John Bruner, as to whether he is going to debate or not. He, there's an unwillingness on his part to to debate. So, you know, I'm ready to do it with or without him. Why do you Why do you think that is? It does seem like your opponents have been much more reluctant to engage in de in in debates than you. Why do you think that's been? Uh, I guess they have something to hide, or they're not prepared to talk about. The solutions or how you know what their principles are. I don't. I really don't know. But I'm ready, and I think voters have a right to uh, have an open and honest debate about these issues that are hurting 
Missouri families every day. They want answers, and we all need to solve these, these problems together. And the best way to do that is, is to get a vigorous uh, discussion going about them, and a debate is a great forum for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.